Hey everybody, welcome back into another video. Today we're gonna do a comparison on these four dynamic microphones for saxophone. So before we jump into this review, I want to make a quick disclaimer so that I don't get yelled and screamed at in the comments. I am not a professional studio engineer. This is not completely 100% professional studio equipment. This is not a professionally treated room that I'm in. My equipment reflects a typical home recordist who wants a decent saxophone sound out of their room. So let me tell you a little bit about my setup so that you don't think that I'm doing this in a completely pristine environment with the best equipment that money can buy. So the interface I'm using is a Focusrite 18i20 that is running into Ableton Live. And the room that I'm in is literally just a bedroom in my house that is my music studio. I do have a little bit of treatment on the walls, but nothing strategic. An acoustician has never been into my studio. So just keep that in mind as we go through this review. This is going to be from the point of view of somebody who has a little bit of recording experience, but is by no means a professional. Okay, so we're gonna go from the cheapest of cheap microphones all the way until something that you might find in a professional studio that costs a little bit more. So we're going from the sub $100 price range all the way up to about $500. Let's just call it $500. So the first mic we're gonna start with is actually not really designed for studio use. It's more of like a podcaster's mic. This is the Audio-Technica ATR2100, actually designed as a USB microphone, but does have an XLR input, so you can use it with all your studio gear. This mic clocks in uh, anywhere between 50 and $70 brand new. This was a mic I used for podcasting for a long time until I upgraded. It has a cardioid pattern, frequency response from 15 hertz all the way up to 15,000 hertz. This is what I'm considering bottom of the barrel as far as saxophone mics go. Second microphone is probably one of the most popular microphones in history. This is the Shure SM57 dynamic microphone. If you've played gigs just about anywhere, your sound guy has probably used this microphone on your saxophone. This one clocks in at about $100 new, but you can find thousands of these online for a lot less money than that if you wanna buy used. This is a very versatile microphone that would be great for your collection, even if you are miking other instruments, not just saxophone. This is also a cardioid microphone with a frequency response from 40 hertz all the way up to 15,000 hertz. The third mic we're gonna talk about is actually very similar to the fourth mic, but there are some differences. This is the Electro Voice RE320. Now we're getting up in price range a little bit. This is gonna cost you about $300 new, but again, thousands of these on the used market, so you can search, find one used for a lot less than that. This microphone and the next microphone I'm gonna talk about have a feature called Variable D, which is supposed to eliminate the proximity effect to the microphone. This is also a very useful microphone on other sources. It's actually also designed to be a kick drum microphone. And when you start to get into this price range, you start to get some options like the variable pickup pattern on the bottom of the mic. This one is also a cardioid pattern, has a frequency response from 45 hertz all the way up to 18,000 hertz. The fourth and final microphone that we're gonna look at today is the brother of the RE320. This is the Electro Voice RE20. This is the most expensive dynamic microphone in my collection. If you wanna buy this new, it's about 450. Again, you can find them used and that price will come down a little bit. This microphone is very, very popular for instruments such as winds and brass. It is also one of the most storied broadcast microphones ever made. You'll find these in radio stations and broadcast booths everywhere. This one also has the variable D technology to eliminate that proximity effect from the microphone. This one also has a frequency response from 45 hertz all the way up to 18,000 hertz. It also has the low pass filter. This microphone is a classic and you will hear this on many, many recordings. Okay, so that's about it. Let's jump into the actual comparison. So I have these microphones running totally cleanly through the signal path. I'm not gonna put any kind of reverb or any kind of EQ. 
I'm just going to record these sounds totally raw so that you can hear the difference between them. I'm not dressing it up with any kinds of effects. I wanna be as neutral as possible with these mics. There's not gonna be any room sound mixed in with this stuff. It is going to be simply the one source, the microphone that I'm standing in front of and playing into. All right, let's get into the actual test. Okay, so now you've heard all four microphones. What do you think? I'm not gonna tell you my favorite. If you've seen some of my other videos, you kind of know which mic that I use because it's always in the shot. But I'll tell you in the comments below what my favorite microphone is. I want you to decide on your own. Let me know in the comments which one you like the best, which one you would consider purchasing, or what do you already own to record saxophones. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this mic comparison. We're gonna be back soon with a cheap condenser microphone comparison, so we're gonna to go to the other side of things. I had a lot of fun putting together this video for you guys, so hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, give us a thumbs up. That really, really helps us. Make sure you like, subscribe, turn on notifications so that you don't miss more videos like this. All right, everybody, have an awesome day, and we will talk to you soon. Bye.